Honorable Minister, Parliamentary Secretary, participants. First of all, I'd like to reiterate um, Dr. Sherry's uh, apologies on behalf of the Minister, um, who could not be with us today due to um, circumstances beyond her control. These are the uh, thoughts that she would have liked to share with you on behalf of her vision for the, her, for the Ministry of the Family and Social Solidarity. This conference is an excellent opportunity to discuss our common concerns about a dementia-friendly society. And I say common because I do believe that we share the same beliefs of how we should make this happen. Undoubtedly, dementia is one of the biggest health and social concerns that we are facing in current times. It is predicted that the number of individuals with dementia will continue to rise in the coming years and will affect almost 4% of the Maltese population in the next half decade. While understanding the difficulties that this condition brings and while speaking with utmost sensitivity about the subject, the greater the number of individuals with dementia, the bigger the socioeconomic consequences as more individuals seek support putting pressure on the available social services. This, of course, is a huge challenge which governments worldwide are facing. In the past few years, there has been greater recognition of the extent of this problem and the need for action. And for this, we need to be grateful. Most European countries have plans and policies to address the main medical, social, and financial aspects that dementia pose for society in general. Malta is also recognizing the need to have a strategic framework in order to deliver, deliver quality improvements in local dementia services and address any shortfalls in dementia management and care. We plan to have a dementia strategy by the end of next year, which will cater for the needs of these individuals, their caregivers, and family members. As Minister of the Family and Social Solidarity, I must express my deep concern about the limited number of services available in the community for individuals with dementia. Studies conducted locally have indicated that the majority of individuals with dementia live within the community and most are willing to continue doing so as long as possible. Individuals, in fact, can remain active and thus continue to live independently if adequate support is provided. This is all about being socially fair and just when dealing with vulnerable people in our society, making sure that everyone's rights are watched over. All this lies within the scope of this government's vision to have a strategy for active aging. Although there are no sure ways to protect us from the most common forms of dementia, there is evidence of beneficial effects from maintaining a healthy lifestyle. This strategy for active aging will address challenges brought about by increasing longevity and demographic changes through a clear and all-encompassing social policy. In a significant number of cases, dementia brings with it the risk of poverty and social exclusion. In many instances, family caring for individuals with dementia try to hide their inability to cope with the increased economic demands posed by the condition. Therefore, our objective as policymakers is to ensure, is to ensure that these individuals do not fall through our safety net. We need to make sure that these individuals are protected and given the assistance they require. And that is what we are doing. In fact, we are in the process of establishing a number of family resource centers around Malta and Gozo to assist and empower people in need, including those experiencing dementia. We are determined to tackle this phenomenon in collaboration with other ministerial structures, non-governmental organizations, and civil society. Because it is when we unite and share ideas that we can all move forward and make the best of our society. People with dementia and their families often feel marginalized by the rest of society, the latter most often focusing on the impairment aspect. As a result, they feel socially excluded. Henceforth, we must make it a priority to increase public awareness, to facilitate social interaction and enhance the quality of life. 
I thus welcome the various initiatives launched at European level in the area of dementia and other diseases. The recent adoption of the European Parliament of the resolution calling for dementia to be made a European priority and thus urging member states to develop dedicated national dementia plans which address the social and health consequences is indeed a way forward. We are also delighted that dementia will be a topic of discussion in the upcoming G8 summit meeting being hosted by the United Kingdom this December. It is only through such international collaboration that we can achieve real progress. And it is through such dedication and perseverance that we can achieve a dementia-friendly society. I conclude by thanking you for hosting such a wonderful event whilst wishing you great success in these coming two days. Thank you.